let's talk about they who have done you wrong. Those people who you have vitriol and hatred for because they have limited you from opportunities. They have lied about you. They have spread false rumors. I'm Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. It is exciting to be passionate about the anger you have towards them. They. Well, who is that? Who is this person who has wronged you? And even if they have legitimately wronged you, here is a secret that you must understand in order to relieve yourself of this pain, this misery, this frustration. Here's that lesson. First, understand they, whoever they are, who has wronged you and done these things to you, they don't know They have done this to you. They don't care that they've done it to you. And it is of their nature to do these horrible things to other people. So why are you upset? Well, it's legitimate that you feel upset. But if you hold that grudge and that frustration and that anger, it is going to slow you down from moving towards the outcomes you desire. Let's say they is a supervisor who has overlooked your talent and ability and passed you over for a promotion. Maybe they're doing the old carrot and stick approach. Well, you know, if you improve in these few areas and we move you along, you know, you're going to get these opportunities and we're going to open doors for you and you're in the right place. And it turns out none of that stuff happens or they were so vague that it feels like maybe they gave you something they didn't. And when you realize now you're frustrated. That frustration taken in any context other than action is going to slow you down. It's going to inhibit your ability to think clearly and you will not be able to move towards an accurate solution. So what if you've been passed over for a promotion? Do you know for a fact that the person who was hired was Less qualified, more qualified. Maybe they're friends with the supervisor. Maybe this supervisor who has wronged you in perception, maybe, in fact, reality, who knows. But this person who has wronged you, maybe they're not somebody you want to work for. See, there's this saying that all things happen for a reason. True or false? We don't know unless you take the time to analyze the situation. So you've been wronged. Well, is this offense something that bothers you? Yes. Is this offense something that has to stop you from moving forward? No. We define what moving forward looks like. You get passed over for an opportunity. Your career feels like it's going nowhere. Let's decide where we want the career to go. You know, it feels like it's going nowhere. Well, maybe that's because we don't have a clear plan to where we want to go. Now, I I will agree, it feels better to be angry. And we could also talk about how anger is useful for controlling populations, for controlling behaviors of others, and how when you keep somebody angry, it keeps them off base. And they're going to always look for a solution, but they'll never take action. I want to help you move forward from the anger, move forward from the despair, move forward from the frustration into clear and definite action steps. And that starts with clearly defining where you want to go. What does success for you look like? Maybe you didn't have a clear picture of the success you wanted, so others around you didn't really know what would be necessary to satisfy your needs so that you continue delivering on their needs, and they found somebody else that can deliver. So what is it that you want? Your clear goals and objectives. I think outcomes is a better focus than your incomes, than how others treat you. You know, you could be completely despised by everyone around you and you not know it. And they could be deliberately putting obstacles in your way and deliberately holding you down and and punishing you for some past crime. Yet you can still overcome if you become what you desire to be in a way that creates outcomes for yourself and outcomes for others, the delivery of value in a marketplace. And and then you can also find others who appreciate what you do. 
So what do you need next? If you've got your goals and objectives in the form of outcomes, maybe you've written visualization statements, maybe you have a dream board, all that. You know, we talk about that some other time. The next thing you need to do is legitimately dis- dif- differentiate feelings versus facts. What obstacles are stopping you from go- getting to the next step? Maybe you feel like you've been passed over, but if you objectively look at it, you just didn't have the qualifications or experience. Obviously, you didn't have the ability to sell that value beyond a benefit of doubt. Or maybe you didn't have the relationship that was necessary to be the person of choice. Or maybe there's nothing you could have done in that environment, but the skills that you have today would get you the opportunity in a different environment. Again, facts versus feelings. What do we know about the situation? Because anger and pain and frustration and vitriol and revenge feels good. But it doesn't take you to the next level where you can start enjoying and appreciating the, the benefits and values you already have. So, so number one, again, is the goals and objectives in the form of outcomes. Number two is really determining what these obstacles are and, and clearly defining who they is and how these people are impacting you. Fact versus feelings. Number three is to now determine which of these facts are relevant to your advancement towards the outcomes because there could be legitimate obstacles in your way that you've identified that you know are actual facts you've had them objectively looked at and now you've got to overcome these maybe you're in a bad relationship and until you get out of that relationship you're going to be dragging behind you're going to be tired and frustrated maybe it's a health issue Until you resolve that health issue, you're not going to be able to have the energy and performance you need. So you've you've narrowed down the list because you know what? Everybody's got problems. Some have more problems than others. But now we narrowed it down to the problems you can do something about. Number four, you're going to take action, specific action. Now, you're not just going to take action because um, sometimes we... You know, you're excited right now. You've been listening to a podcast. You're like, hell yeah, I'm going to take action. And you start taking some action. And then 10 minutes later, you're doing something else. I want you to write a plan down for the actions you're going to take. Don't do anything until you have a list, at least one side of a sheet of paper, three to five actions that you're going to take. And then you pick the most important action. And finally, step number five is you do something. You do something. Now, how do you know you did something? Well, it might feel like progress, but if you don't have a consistent measure, so number five includes measures, you need to do something towards the outcome you desire and you must do it in a way that you can measure the performance of that activity to know if you're actually progressing. There is a state of mind that you can become, right or wrong, where you're immune to criticism where people can dump on you, the world around you can go to crap, and you look at the world and say, look, I know I see a giant Apollo shit here. I know it's cow manure up over my head, but with all this poop, there must be a pony in there somewhere. Think about it. In some people's eyes, the world is falling apart. But someone's eyes, the world is going exactly as planned. See, you could be on the receiving end of of tyranny, the receiving end of oppression, the receiving end of war and conflict, but there's somebody in that that arrangement that thinks they're doing the right thing. See, many of the people who have wronged you in the past, who have taken away opportunity from you, they believe they're doing the right thing. What if you had such strong beliefs and were actually doing what is right? Right. If the job that you're in is not working out the way you like it, start a side opportunity, start a business, start demonstrating to the marketplace your value. You could, you could start applying for new opportunities. If you're working an 80 hour week and you feel worn out and burned out, work a 70 hour week and add 10 hours to improve your situation. Can't do 10 hours a week to improve your situation? Do 15 minutes a day. Can't do 15 minutes a day? Start over on this list because evidently your outcomes, those desires, those those goals and objectives weren't strong enough. You didn't have enough reason why to move forward that you're allowing all these frustrations to hold you back. Now, again, the basis of what I'm describing here is that the person you're angry with likely doesn't care, likely doesn't know, and likely has no clue of what they've done to you. 
And legitimately, they could be doing things, abusive things. They could be a narcissist and they're, they're really setting you up for failure. They're gaslighting you. They're, they're calling you out in front of other people to make you look stupid. As soon as you recognize this is happening, it is not their responsibility to change. It is your responsibility to clearly identify the outcomes you desire. Not what you don't want, but what you want. You want a manager. You want a business partner. You want a spouse that respects you that is honest with you, that is a partner in, in lifting you and them up, then you clearly had defined, de- determine the truth by, by clearly identifying feelings and fact. If you feel somebody's against you, what are the, what's the evidence? Are these evidence, is this evidence objectively and factually accurate? If you know the fact is you're confirmed and you know the fact is they're oppressing you, how does that make you feel? And how would you like to feel? Next again is, is that prioritization because you're not going to be able to fix it all. Then for the prioritization, it's actions with evidence. How are you going to measure your progress? What are you going to do to move forward? And if you do those things, will it move you towards the outcomes you desire? And finally, take some action with a written plan. If, and frankly, folks, if you can't write down a plan, then maybe you enjoy that pain and suffering. Maybe something about you needs some work where it makes you feel whole because you're getting pressed down. It's a fact in history that there are people that really get a kick out of the oppression Olympics. They have no intention to improve their situation, no intention to make themselves more valuable in the marketplace, to learn new skills, to, to read up and get facts and information and to make decisions and hold themselves accountable with lists and to decide to do some things over other things. And they find their world is full of complaints and blame, and frustration. But what I'm saying to you is it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to be frustrated. In fact, you can change your mind a lot faster than you're going to change your situation. And you can decide to, to clarify. To You know what? Every one of these people who are yelling at you and telling you're a loser and you're never going to make it and you're never going to be successful, what if that's not what you hear? What if they're jealous? What if they're ill-informed? Well, you buckle down. You you get the facts. You move forward with clear steps and objectives. You move towards goals and you'll be so busy that you won't notice the naysayers. And you can make a list of famous and successful people, and I can give you a list of people who hated them. You know, Booker T. Washington had a nemesis. Elon Musk has nemesis. Bill Gates has nemesis. Now, some of these people might deserve the nemesis as they get. We don't know them personally. We don't know their situation other than the materials that they've written. But I can tell you that the evidence of their behaviors demonstrate that they're deserving of more. Now, again, Bill Gates, good Lord, uh, Bill Gates is having a lot of problems. Maybe he's not deser- deserving. So feelings versus fact. Elon Musk, maybe he's running a giant Ponzi scheme. Booker T. Washington, historical character. Now, Booker T. Washington's books, you can't argue with the quality of, you know, building of character in the books that he has. The, the lessons he teaches have, have demonstrated through time. But these other folks, we don't know. So why worry about it? Why be held back? That person at the office that just doesn't like you and has been been against you ever since the first day you've shown up at that office. That competitor from across the place who's constantly trying to destroy your business. What if they're actually cheering you on? What if they're giving you the energy through the feelings to move forward with a factual and accurate plan to better and level up? What if you approach the situation in such a way to deliver to an audience not the person who's bitching at you, not the person you got problems with, to deliver to somebody at a higher value those things that confirm your value in the marketplace. What I'm arguing is there's a lot more that you can do if you stop bitching and whining, if you stop making excuses, if you stop worrying about the other person and start focusing on you and your family. Now, to close this out, we talk about relationship realms. They start with you as an individual, and I can argue that it even goes back to your ancestors, but, but you as an individual, your immediate family, 
your community, your associations, and it moves out from there. If you were walking down a street and there was somebody you had no idea who they were and they stumble up to you and they call you a dumbass, you're not going to be bothered by it. If you run into somebody at work who calls you a dumbass or passively, aggressively uh, treats you like a dumbass, that's a different story. But in, I'm arguing in both situations that you can get down to the facts, you can get down to a plan, you can determine what you want to do as, an out, as a result of these activities, and you can focus your energy on areas to deliver the results that you're looking for. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. We talk about relationships. We talk about critical thinking. We talk about the leverage of our mind to gain influence and opportunity in marketplaces. Inside Strategic Relations is about transforming business relationships into profits guaranteed. These profits come in many forms, but again, they are outcomes that are tangible and you can hold them. You can't hold feelings you know, you can hold hatred and frustration and it can, it just eats, eats away at you. But physically holding joy and happiness comes only when you can set aside childish things and focus on measurable outcomes. I want to thank you for listening today. If you have any questions about this program or anything else we cover in this podcast, be sure to like and subscribe, but you can visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Go to the contact page, write us a little note, ask your question, tell me about your challenges and frustrations. We will cover it in an episode of the Inside Strategic Relations newsletter. Again, I'm Justin Hitt, and this has been about letting go of those frustrations and drawing towards you more of what you desire. Thanks for listening.